Oh, it's you again. What? I've never met you before in my life. Yeah, you have. You were here last week. No, I wasn't, and I can assure you that I don't associate with your sort. What do you mean, my sort? You sound like if you were any thicker, we could use you as peanut butter. Now, that's not true. Is it? Well, I'm going to go find some bread. Welcome back to Kippy's Quest. No, you haven't clicked on last week's video by mistake. The two and three of wands just happen to look very similar to each other. It's also another card of triumph and achievement, but in a different way to the previous card. We find no mention of chagrin or sadness in this one. The three of wands is a card of growth and expansion, building on past victories to progress to even greater heights. We get the usual geometric patterns from the Marseille and Sforza tarot. The Thoth deck provides us with another fiery looking card, obviously referring to its Kabbalistic position, which we'll get to later. Crowley says it represents the establishment of primeval energy. The Solobuska card is... Well, what even is that? Is it suggesting that your head is going to be impaled by three wooden stakes? Maybe that was a common occurrence in 15th century Italy. In the Wade Smith version, we see the similarities to the previous card. Wade says a calm, stately personage with his back turned, looking from a cliff's edge at ships passing over the sea. Three staves are planted in the ground, and he leans slightly on one of them. The main subject is well-dressed and considered to be a merchant of sorts. The ships are said to symbolize the idea of looking for new opportunities, while the wands represent current success and the continued drive to achieve. It's a card of ambition and always makes me think of the famous quote, dream no small dreams for they have not the power to move the hearts of men. So let's dream big and reach for the sky. Like a scarecrow. What could that possibly have to do with scarecrows? Well, they reach for the sky and they're always outstanding in their field. <laughs> the hermetic title for the Three of Wands is Lord of Established Strength. So you can see that quite clearly in this card, the idea of current achievements working as a foundation for new endeavours. Now, the title of the card in the Thoth Tarot is Virtue, so we've got a slight difference. However, we know that strength is one of the four cardinal virtues, together with justice, temperance and prudence, who still doesn't have her own tarot card. So we can see the connection between the two ideas. Lon Milo Duquette says the great power and the will to use that power that we saw represented by the Two of Wands has now become fertilized and expressed in terms of character as virtue. The image of the man looking out to sea brings all kinds of spiritual ideas into focus and the ultimate goal of the tarot sequence and fool's journey. Rachel Pollack says metaphysically the sea has always evoked in people a sense of the vastness and mystery of the universe while rivers symbolize the experience of the ego dissolving into that great sea. Established strength brings us to the idea that we've achieved the dominion of the last card, and now it's time to consider new possibilities. Wade says those are his ships bearing his merchandise which are sailing over the sea. The card also signifies able cooperation in business, as if the successful merchant prince were looking from his side toward yours with a view to help you. I quite like the idea that the Three of Wands is looking over at the two, who's struggling with his lack of direction and telling him to branch out and try new things. You need to explore new avenues. What? I need to adore blue kangaroos? No, I mean you should seek out opportunities. I should speak out against communities. Ugh, never mind. Clever blind. What the bloody hell are you going on about? The Three of Wands corresponds to the Aries zodiac sign and is ruled by the Sun. So we've got the Sun in Aries for this one. In astrology, the Sun is considered to represent the self, as in the core of our identity or ego. When we consider the fact that the Sun is at the center of our solar system and that we rely on it to give us life, that makes perfect sense. The Sun is exalted in Aries, which is a great position to be in. La Malo de Quet says what a truly noble and well-aspected card this is. The Sun is in Aries, the sign of his exaltation, and couldn't be happier. The Sun in Aries speaks of confidence, ambition, and innovation. During this time, it's considered to be a good idea to take risks, assert our ideas and look for new ways to express ourselves. Once again, the fiery cardinal sign of Aries indicates action and initiative, which is spot on for this card. Crowley says it refers to the sun in Aries, the sign in which he is exalted. The meaning is harmonious. The Three of Wands resides in the world of Atsalut and sits at the third Sephiroth of Bina, at the top of the Pillar of Severity. The name of this Sephiroth translates to understanding. So we're at the third Sephira of Bina, which is the last of the three Sephiroth that make up what is known as the Supernal Triangle. 
This is thought of as a kind of abstract world of infinite possibility. Israel Regardi says the first three Sephiroths, denominated the Supernals, transcend in every possible way all intellectual conceptions. Great, let's talk about them on YouTube then. That'll work. He goes on to say the Supernals are ideal, the other Sephiroths are actual. We talked a little bit about this in the Judgment video, the Platonic ideals and the concept of perfect, absolute and eternal forms. This is why the very top of the tree is considered to be archetypal, with Beenar completing the Trinity. It's considered to be the female counterpoint to the male Sephira of Hokmar. According to British occultist Dion Fortune, Beenar, the Great Mother, sometimes also called Mara, the Great Sea, is of course the mother of all living. She's the archetypal womb through which all life comes into manifestation. Whatsoever provides form to serve life as a vehicle is of her. The free of one's herb is saffron. This particular herb promotes pelvic circulation. <laughs> but what does it all mean? When the three of wands appears, it generally symbolizes success and looking to expand on that success. As with all the tarot cards, the precise reading will vary depending on the context, but weight divinatory meanings are established strength, enterprise, effort, trade, commerce, discovery. So from a career point of view, we can see exactly what the card is getting at. It's saying that it's time to consider branching out and looking at new ways to build on our achievements. If you're successful at what you're doing right now, then presumably you've built up a skill set that you can take with you into a new endeavor. Speaking personally, I've got a background in music production, so when I started this channel it meant that I could bring that knowledge with me. That's why I always make my own music for my videos, which is useful when it comes to avoiding things like copyright strikes. From a relationship perspective, it's not a card of endings, but rather a card of expanding on our current relationships. Rachel Pollack says the image suggests keeping a solid basis in what we've already accomplished, while we continue to open new areas and interests in ourselves. Sometimes in readings, this can mean maintaining a primary commitment to existing relationships, while looking for new friends and lovers. In a more general sense, my friend Ange, who you'll know as the herbal expert for the channel, has been drawing the Three of Wands a lot recently. She's thinking about moving house and has been looking at potential new properties. It's like she's sending those ships out from an established place to see what her options are in the wider world. Finally, the card can indicate acceptance. According to Rachel Pollock, some tarot cards acquire special meanings that apply only to specific situations. For a person troubled or struggling with the past, the Three of Wands can indicate becoming at peace with his or her memories. Wait had quite the positive message for the reverse card. He said it represented the end of troubles, suspension or cessation of adversity, toil and disappointment. That sounds good to me. The end of disappointment would be very welcome right now. Another way of looking at the reverse three of wands is from the idea of hitting a bit of a dead end in our attempts to expand. This wouldn't necessarily mean that you won't succeed, but just that this particular strategy may not work out and you might need to go back to the drawing board. It can also be about returning home after an exploration and appreciating what we've already achieved. Dealing with unpleasant memories can be another factor in the reverse card. Pollock says on the one hand it can mean the failure of some exploration or project, but it can also mean becoming involved in our environment after a time of detachment and reflection. Finally, it can indicate being disturbed by memories. So the big takeaway for the Three of Wands is the concepts of aspiration, progress and expansion. The figure on the card, watching his ship sailing across the sea, speaks of our vision and our ability to create our future successes. It's a card about having confidence in ourselves, and tells us that we're already well on the way to the life that we desire. May we take this opportunity to thank you from the hearts of our bottoms for watching all the way to the end. May the coming days bring you ambition, opportunity and the tenacity to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.